Hi, this is Jerry, and uh, I'm here today at the uh, Altmulgee Indian Mounds National Monument uh, here in Macon, Georgia. And I'm here with Ranger Davis, and he has been incredible, uh, giving me just a phenomenal amount of history. So we're going to do a walk through here in the museum, and then I'll take you out through the mounds, the Temple Mounds, and some of the just absolutely fantastic trails as we're right here on the edge of Macon, right off of I-16. And again, if you're coming down I-75, going to Florida, coming back, this is a treasure that so few know about and so many need to see. So uh, let's take a tour and I'll show you some really great things here. So as we start our tour here, this is uh, showing um, the actually the, the Paleo Indians that were here from 17,000 years ago. It's going to be impossible for me to put all the information here that I'm going to be showing today, but uh, i kind of show you just the existence of uh, the, the people that lived here from this period of time, Paleo-Indians, all the way through the woodland, and then eventually the Mississippian that were here. You can see some information about the big game hunting that was here during that period. You are going to be just absolutely amazed of the things that we're gonna find here today. Here's actually a fossil that was recovered here from about uh, 8,000 BC. Um, this is a remains of a leg bone from a woolly mammoth. How about that? Let's continue the timeline here. That's okay. This is a little over 11,000 years ago. And you can see cooking implements that are appearing. Uh, weaponry is changing. I'll take you over here and show you this. Isn't this something? Woodland period, 3,000 years ago. And then we start getting into what I think you're going to find most interesting is roughly 1,000 years ago as we get into what they call the mound builders. And these are farmers. You can still see large areas of corn storage that are still here that's been maintained. And you'll see all forms of pottery. So we'll take a walk on back into the museum. You're going to find this very interesting. So you're going to hear a little bit of an air conditioner here. It is some kind of hot today. But just look at all these. I'm get a reflection from the windows, but look at all these arrowheads, all forms of shards of pottery. Come on, we'll walk on down through here. And here you'll start seeing the 1930s is when this was formed as a, uh, a national monument. Um, over 600 laborers came here and started the archaeological digs of this area. As a matter of fact, we're going to be walking back, as you'll see here, to this mound in just a bit. Things have changed quite a bit. And then the biggest treat that I think you're going to find is the earth lodge that was discovered here. And uh, we're actually going to get to go inside of that. It's going to be really rare to actually see something like that. Unfortunately, we of this modern time have uh, taken into better consideration of those ancient artifacts that we, saw, that we find, but unfortunately in uh, 1943 and again in 1874, as you'll see here, I know you're going to find this to be a shame, some of the mounds were actually severely damaged and even destroyed uh, because the railroad came right through the middle of them. Those tracks are still here. But uh, hopefully not many artifacts were missing. And then this was a big trading area here. There's actually a, excavations of a fort, Fort Hawkins, which is nearby, right on the edge of the fields. It was formed in 1806. You can see that. I'll try to get a picture of that. They've actually done a replica of it, of one of the corner houses. So this area goes back with human existence 17,000 years. That's amazing. Quite amazing. 
So let's continue back into the uh, back of the museum. This is this was redone a few years ago, from my understanding, and expanded quite a bit. And uh, you'll see examples of the pottery from the period that they've found here, 1700s. Some of this pottery goes back to 7th century. I'll try to get into here a little closer where you can see some of the designs. Some of this is rather ornate. And I think it's incredible that they've been able to find much of this intact. And Macon's always been known for its clay. And not far from here, Kaolin, uh, which is some of the richest Kaolin deposits in the world are found here. What they refer to as China grade. And then you can actually see where the Europeans started trading iron and copper products, bales. That is a hoe blade. Can you make that out? Also due to uh, what's been found here with the temple mounds and the size of them, it's really believed that this is a sacred place. The Mississippians were here for roughly 700 years. Amazing. That's amazing. Some of the flint blades that were found here on the property. Axe heads. And this is a model of what we're going to actually see here in just a bit. Uh, this is referred to as the earthen lodge. And you're going to actually see the way that lodge is set up. And if you'll notice, there's an eagle's head there and a chieftain that sits in the middle and a bird's eye. Now remember all this will continue to go around. And you can actually see where the sunlight comes in from an area that we're going to walk in. There's something really interesting that happens twice a year with this setup from these periods. And I realize this was built roughly a thousand years ago, and we're going to actually see many of the timbers that are still original that, that survived. Pretty neat. So this is referred to as the Macon Plateau. And there's lots of different things that have been found here. Uh, you'll see where they were trading with others. There's a shell necklace. Uh, somebody did some serious traveling. Those are conch beads. I want you to see this. This is a copper sun disk. And then shell hairpins. Notice the turtle shell? And then the hairpins that went with that. This was also found on the grounds here. A conch dipper. A human effigy bottle. Interesting. Now from some of the things that's been discovered here, if this is how it's believed that these mounds were built. As you'll see, uh, there's a hoe. Stone, they found those. You saw those earlier. They found remnants of these baskets. And just think about this, when you see the size of these mounds now, that that dirt was carried basket at a time to make those mounds. You can only imagine the amount of labor that went into that. Again, if you've seen so much in history in the movies, uh, the pipe was important. And I just want you to see these ornate pipes that were made. Uh, human head pipes, uh, that is a bird pipe, a dog pipe, and look at this. This is a bird's, bird stone effigy pipe. Something, huh? So we're right on the edge of the Altmulgee River, and you can see fishing stones for weights. 
bowls, hooks made out of bone. This is all, that's reproduction, but some of this is original. They've even found charred corn cob showing that uh, corn was important to staple diet. So uh, we've just finished walking around inside the actual museum here and you can see that back into the back and uh, we're going to go out now and see the mounds and I'm going to take you to the temple mound and then just some of the beautiful trails. Uh, you could spend probably an hour here and, and really see some neat things but really if you want to treat yourself you want to spend several hours so let's take a walk on the grounds i'm going to show you some incredible incredible views uh, of these beautiful indian mounds let's go so we we're walking outside now you're actually going to see some people coming up um, this is kind of neat but uh, as you see these folks coming in we're going to be taking a walk i'm going to zoom out as far as i can if you can see it all the way out there in the distance that's the Temple Mound. Uh, and we'll take a walk down through here and this is gonna really be neat. So as we look here, this is a woodland house about uh, a thousand years, 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago for the Southeastern Indians who lived here. These were no, not nomadic Indians like you see out west. Uh, they lived here for thousands and thousands of years. And this is what's referred to as a woodland house. Uh, from the artifacts that they found here on site. They believe this is how they were built. Basically a thatch. Okay. Swing around here. We're headed down to the mound. So, as I promised, uh, here we are. Uh, right, right behind me is the entrance to the, to the uh, Great Temple Mound that's located here, a ceremonial mound. Uh, this mound is over a thousand years old. And we'll go inside. I'm gonna have to do some stooping, so let me uh, let me bump the camera a little bit as we do that. I'll show you this board over here as well. As you see, um, some of the information. It'll be just kind of a highlight of what we're actually going to see on the inside. It's pretty amazing. And I just thought I would show you this. This is Ultmulgee Earth Lodge. It's America's oldest ceremonial lodge, believed to go back 800 years, and it was discovered in 1934. And they've had carbon dating on it that goes back to 1015. It's been quite amazing. So here we go. So this, I'm gonna have to do a little stooping here. So uh, I'll try not to uh, jiggle too much. I think the people who lived here during this period were probably a little shorter. So I'm six foot tall. I would say this opening's probably about four feet. And I bumped my head. <laughs> so here we go. So I'll just do a span here. Of Here's the entrance. And uh, then you can see the seats. You can make this out. Uh, the individual seats and see the little bowl areas in each front of those. <clears throat> you can still see the seating. You can see some of these were the original timbers. How massive these trees were. And then there's the fire pit. They've got it lit up for looks. And of course the smoke went out through the top. But uh, can you make that out? The seating there is a roughly a large, maybe an eagle or bird's head. Can you see that? And the seats get larger. So there's some kind of an order here. As the seats get larger and larger, the bowls in front get larger. I'm gonna swing over here just a little ways. And uh, you can actually see that there's a, you can't make it out here. It's very, very difficult with the lighting that's in here, but there's actually a bird's eye that goes across. There's a slight indentation there that would go up to the main seat that's up there, the largest seat. And each one of those has like a bowl area in front of it. And this goes all the way across. 
Now here's here's what's very very interesting. So twice a year during the spring and the fall equinox, if you see here, the sun would come up and come through that that tunnel and then come straight across the eye of the eagle here onto I guess the chief or whoever was the main leader at the time twice a year uh, signaling planting and signaling harvest time this is a thousand years old it's quite amazing look at the size of these timbers and can you see this was actually burned when they had found when they found it you can actually see the burn marks on these huge huge timbers you can see the scored burn marks from the fires of that period amazing huh one of the things that you'll find here are these um, I call them the cornfield mound and these prehistoric trenches. Um, th they believe that it might have been used for actually growing crops. They actually think crops were grown a little bit closer to the river just for water. But uh, I'll lift this up here so you can see it. You can see them over here. Um, I'll walk over here so you can actually see the area. And you can actually see these trenches. They could have been used for... Um, military purposes for protection uh, there's not a whole lot known but let's walk over here and I'll show you this so you can actually see this um, they have found charred remains of corn cob and things like that so it may have been used for corn star storage or again it could have been defensive batteries they don't, it's, it's really just not known there's no historical record no writing to say how these were used but the interesting thing is it's right by that ceremonial mound that's over there on your left that we just came through. So interesting. A lot of other mounds to go to. We've got one down here that I think they call the Great Mound. Let's go to that. Giant mound known as the Great Mound off in the distance. And I shared something with you. Um, just how things were different back in the mid to late 1800s. Cutting right through the property. Yeah, and some mounds were damaged. I think I showed you that. It was a railroad right through the grounds. Isn't that something? And can you imagine when they were building this? As people just looked off in the distance as they were cutting these things through here. There was the temple mound. Or that ceremonial mound. We just had different views back then, huh? One of the things that you'll notice here is there's great, well-developed trails here. Um, some are paved, some are gravel. Um, I actually showed you earlier that there was a railroad track coming through the area. Uh, they've done a great job of creating a, uh, a very nice bridge that you can walk across here as we go over to some of the other mounds. And again, if you're not physically able to do the walking um, you can drive to all these mounds uh, you may not be able to walk up them there's a lot of stairs but um, you, you can definitely at least drive around and tour the area and there's plenty of parking that for those who still don't want to walk but uh, want to go up and walk up the mounds then uh, there's parking down below all these and I'll show you that as well but this is this is really a beautiful 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 national monument I think you'll find this interesting. You hear about the Muscogee Indians from 1600 to 1826. How did the creeks get their name? Well, the English called the Ultmulgee River, Ultmulgee River, the Ochisi Creek. Can you see that? Then the Indians were called the Ochisi Creek Indians. And then over time, what happened? Uh, the Europeans referred to them as Creek Indians, but the natives still referred to themselves as Muscogee. So that's around 1600 to 1826. Wars broke out, 23 million acres 
of this land was lost between Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. We hear about the Trail of Tears that occurred here. The interesting thing about the Creeks, a lot of them lived in log homes. They had adopted some of the lifestyles of the Europeans from that period. And the first written documentation about the Creeks was William Bartran in 1775, who was a naturalist who traveled down the Ultmuggy River and to what is referred to from where we're standing as the Old Fields. So all this area here, including the mound you see over there in the distance, and then all through the woods, quite a, quite a few acres out in that area, are referred to as the old fields and there's a number of minor mounds as you hike down into those and really it's swampy now um, can be found and, and those minor mounds were actually where houses had been placed so i want to keep giving you a reference uh, with the uh, mound that's off in the distance that big giant one that we're getting ready to walk up i just want to give you a reference of that but what's interesting right here in the middle of this this property, uh, the British had a trading post that was here between 1690 and 1750. Um, and they traded with the Creeks a hundred years before the American Revolution, um, 1690. And uh, the trades went all up and down this river. But here's what's interesting. If you can see, if you can make it out over here, Try to be very still. It's a bit dark. It's real overcast today, so here we go. It's brightening up. Um, you can actually see kind of a mo moated area, and it's kind of a triangle shape. It's hard for me to show it to you here at, at this elevation, but there's a triangle shape, and this is where the trading post was located, right here in the middle of in the middle of. Uh, where all these Creek Indians lived. And again, as I turn, right on the other side of those mounds is the uh, Ultmuggy River. And we here in the south refer to it as the Ultmuggy. Ultmuggy. Uh, it looks like it would be Ultmuggy, <laughs> but we southerners don't pronounce anything right. <laughs> so we're here at the base of the uh, Great Temple Mound and it's recognized as a sacred site so we will be respectful of it but here's the nice thing uh, we've got these great steps that we get to go up here as we approach the mound and there you can see it off to the distance you'll start hearing traffic here soon that's i-16 on the edge of civilization. I'll show you a few other things that's up here. So this is the Great Temple Mound and town site. I may get run off from here in a few minutes. I hear thunder in the background. Not much is known about this really. Mississippian period 900 AD to 1600 AD. Woodland Indians. <clears throat> I'm feeling drops. I'm going to have to hurry. Whew, I had to run up the steps again because the rain's coming. I'll try to keep the lens down. Um, it's starting to sprinkle here, but you can see the Temple Mount off to the distance. Can you see that? off in the distance and then you can just see this fantastic mound and then look at these incredible views it's actually very pretty <clears throat> you can see the river down there beautiful and then civilization and that you can see the, the rain streaking down I'm hurrying 
you can actually see and probably hear off in the distance the highway from I-16. You can see downtown Macon. So I hate it, but I'm going to have to cut my trip short. There's all kinds of beautiful nature trails here that are just absolutely fantastic. So you get to walk around the side of the river. But uh, I will leave you with this parting shot of a 17,000 year old civilization and the city off in the distance. So this is Jerry on top of the Up Mulligy Indian Mound, Great Temple Mound. It's sprinkling. I've got to save the camera. It is, I'm seeing it off in the distance. It's pouring. It's coming this way, so I'm going to have to run. But I hope you get a chance to come to uh, Ult Mulgi National Monument. It is absolutely spectacular. So much to do, so much to see. A beautiful museum. Incredible history that goes back thousands of years for a civilization we know little about. It's raining, and I still love Iowa. <laughs> It's raining and I still love RV life. Let's go.